What's up, everybody? Welcome to Heresy Financial. My name is Joe Brown, and today we are going to discuss the stock to flow model. The stock to flow model is used as a pricing model to set expectations for where Bitcoin might go in the future. Coming up in just a couple of weeks, we have something called the halvening that is going to happen with the production and the mining of new Bitcoins, which will directly impact its stock to flow. So over the next couple of weeks, you are likely to see more and more people talk about this, whether it's on financial news outlets like CNBC or just on things like Twitter. And if you have no idea what it is or if you've tried to read a few articles on it and it's a little bit too much over your head stick with me here because i'm going to break it down for you in a way that anybody can understand let's dive in stock to flow what is it what does it have to do with the price or the value of bitcoin and what does the upcoming Havening have to do with the stock to flow ratio. The stock to flow ratio is simply the total supply, the existing current supply of a commodity like Bitcoin or gold or silver compared to the rate at which it is currently being produced. The rate at which new units of that commodity are coming into existence. That's it. Really simple. Stock to flow is there's this much that already exists and every year this much gets added into the existing stockpile. It's simply a measure of scarcity. Let's take a look at an example. Gold has a current above ground stockpile of about 185,000 tons. Now every year we add about 3,000 tons to the stockpile when you look at the existing mines that are currently producing and have an output of gold. You add about 3,000 tons of new gold to the existing stockpile. That puts the stock to flow ratio of gold at just around 62. That means it would take 62 years at the current rate of production to produce the same amount that is currently in the total supply. Now, percentage wise, that means that the inflation rate of gold is about 1.3%. Now, with normal commodities, anything that's a physical good, it's actually pretty difficult for any significant changes to happen with the stock to flow ratio with the inflation rate because of how it affects price changes. For example, let's say some big player just started buying up a ton of gold and storing it hoarding it, not letting it recirculate. That would cause the price of gold to go up because there's a lot more buying pressure compared to the selling pressure in the ecosystem of buying and selling of gold. Well, the price going up of gold would make it more profitable for miners to start mining and dump more money into their mining production. And so the new supply, the flow of new gold coming onto the market would increase to keep up with the demand. Silver, just like any commodity, it also has a stock to flow ratio but it is significantly lower than gold the current supply of silver the current total stock is about 550,000 tons versus the flow of new silver coming into the market is about 25,000 tons per year. This puts the stock to flow ratio at about 22, meaning it would take 22 years to produce the same amount of silver that is currently in existence in the total stockpile. And that puts its inflation rate at right around four and a half percent. Now, again, it would be very difficult for this inflation rate to significantly change because let's say the production of silver gets extremely cheap. Let's say they find some new technology that applies to silver only that allows them to mine silver extremely efficiently and extremely cheaply. The total supply of silver would initially increase extremely quickly, but with the total supply increasing extremely quickly, the demand for it would not be keeping pace with the increase in supply. Therefore, the demand would fall, the price would fall for all of that extra silver that came onto the market as well, and the production would cease to be profitable. And so you'd very quickly fall back down to that regular inflation rate of right around four and a half percent. If you look at any other precious metals or industrial metals, anything like platinum, palladium, copper, even things like oil, their stock to flow ratio is extremely low. And most of them are right around one, meaning that every year the same amount is produced as the current total stockpile. Now, when you look at this and see how high 
the stock to flow ratio of gold is compared to all of the other metals and all the other commodities, it starts to make sense why gold naturally and organically found itself to be money for thousands and thousands of years across cultures and across time. Because the nature of a stock to flow ratio is very difficult to change, the fact that gold does have such a high stock to flow ratio means it's very difficult to inflate without high cost, high labor, and the fact that it can't be used up or destroyed like some of the other commodities can means that it fulfills some of the other necessities of what makes something operate well as money. So where does that leave Bitcoin? The current total stock of Bitcoins in existence is somewhere around 18 million. Now, right now, because of the way that Bitcoin is designed, the rate at which new Bitcoins are introduced into the network is right around 0.7 million per year. That means every year there are about 700,000 new Bitcoins introduced into the network given to miners as the reward, as the payment for verification, for proof of work, for the mining that they are doing. This puts the stock to flow ratio of Bitcoin right around 25, which is just a tad bit higher than silver, which was at 22, if you remember. Now, for something to operate really well as money, there are a number of items that it must fulfill in order for it to operate well as money. Scarcity is is one of these factors that something must be scarce in order to operate well as money. Now, all of these characteristics, they are necessary for something to operate well as money, but they're not sufficient. So just because something is scarce doesn't mean that it will operate well as money, but for something to operate well as money, it must have some sort of scarcity to it. This means that your great grandmother's diary, yes, it's scarce. There's only one of them and none others can ever be produced because there's only one of them, but scarcity in and of itself is not sufficient for something to operate well as money. There are a lot of other factors. The stock to flow ratio is simply just a measure of the scarcity of something, how much cost there is associated with producing or inflating the current supply. And so we see that from this one measurement, Bitcoin does operate better as money than something like silver. However, it is nowhere near the stock to flow ratio of gold yet. And that brings us to the second part of this video, which is the halvening. What is the halvening, which is coming up in just a couple of weeks here, halfway through May? The halvening is something that happens with Bitcoin just about once every four years. And it simply means that the miners, those who are performing the proof of work to verify transactions that happen on the Bitcoin network, the payment gets cut in half. There are half the number of Bitcoins produced as compared to before, and that happens every single, just about every four years. Now, since it's a percentage, it's half, it goes down by 50%. That means that it's gonna take a very long time for the, um, for the number of Bitcoins being produced to actually hit zero. This basically just means that it is harder to mine the exact same thing, Bitcoin, than it was before. Imagine it was like mining gold and as soon as you mine, as soon as you finish mining one layer of gold, you have to go down to the next layer of the Earth's crust, which in this example would be twice as difficult, twice as hard to drill through that layer. The, the actual rock would be twice as hard to get through. That would mean your replacement costs of your drilling equipment, your energy requirements, it just gets much more difficult. And then so the supply, the total supply of gold being produced into the outside world would be cut in half. That's what's happening with Bitcoin in May. So what are the implications of this? The implications of this is that since this happens predictably every four years or so, this means that the stock to flow ratio of Bitcoin will soon be higher than any commodity, even gold, which means that its scarcity goes up. It becomes more scarce over time, not less scarce like the dollar. It it also means that the cost of acquiring new Bitcoins goes up, meaning if all else stays equal, that will drive the value of Bitcoin up because the cost, the actual energy cost of running computers to verify the transactions and mine the new Bitcoins actually goes up. Now, all else being equal is a very big statement because nothing in the financial world always has everything else staying equal. Financial markets price in future expectations of what is going to happen. And anybody with a large amount of money who is investing in or playing Bitcoin will have been expecting this happening to come up for a very long time now. So it's very possible that this could be one of those 
events where the price of Bitcoin actually goes up, up until the event when the happening actually happens. And then a big sell-off happens afterwards as people are taking profits from it. One of those buy the rumor, sell the fact type of situations. However, long-term, a higher stock to flow ratio, meaning a higher cost of acquiring new Bitcoins and a lower speed at which it is being inflated does mean that that would have a beneficial impact on the price of Bitcoin long term, especially when you're pricing it in terms of something like the dollar, which is doing the exact opposite, increasing its rate of inflation and it's becoming easier and easier to get your hands on new dollars, not harder and harder. So now when you see on CNBC or any of these websites talking about the halvening coming up or the stock to flow ratio, predicting much higher prices for the price of Bitcoin. Just remember the stock to flow ratio is simply the rate at which the supply is being inflated. It's the total amount that's existing divided by the new supply that's being pumped into the market. Remember that markets are future and forward looking and so the happening has most likely already been priced in long term something like Bitcoin that has features built into it that makes it more scarce over time and that makes it have a higher cost of acquiring and production over time. That means that it's moneyness and its monetary usefulness and its ability to store value long term gets better over time and not worse. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button, that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. I appreciate you guys. Have a great day.